Yes, uh, this is a man that you knew quite well and in fact was very close to you. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. so it's a difficult day. Um, Umkulu was the chairman of uh, our VC firm. Mm -hmm. He was also the patron of the firm. Um, I, um, for me, it's still, still a bit jolted, yeah. I think. Um, and jolted, I suppose, because I was talking to him uh, not so long ago. Yeah. Um, he was somebody from whom I would seek counsel uh, and somebody who would give it to me mm. straight. Um, and when you get to my level in business, that's very rare to find somebody who will call you on your own blind spots, but also help you navigate very mm. difficult paths. What we're doing, Peter, has never been done before. You know, we are the first true black venture capital firm in South Africa, and you needed somebody like him who went against the day, went against the grain, yeah. went against the rule of law to do what he felt his true potential was. Yeah. And uh, it really is a dark day. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about um, his qualities. Um, I mean, you've studied, uh, a lot of people who succeed now have gone to university, got yeah. degrees and so on and so forth. Yeah. But here's a man who, at a time when it was almost impossible yeah. to do what he did, yeah. he found a way to get it done. So what was it about him as a person inside that was able to, in, a, in an impossible situation, make stuff possible? Anyone, anyone who knows Mkulu will tell you yeah. that he was, I think recalcitrant is the word that yeah. comes to mind, completely belligerent. Mm. He, he was the type of person for whom no is not the word you should say. So don't say no, it can't be done. Um, and, and I got to know him much, much later. And, and a lot of people would say to me, you know the soft him. Like <laughs> this guy was far more, much more belligerent. But, you know, he would often tell me stories about the early days. I remember asking him the question, so I was like, you're 23, 24, when you start your first business. I said, what drove you? And he said to me two things. He said, the first was the idea of calling somebody his age boss. Mm. He said, I was never going to do that. So I just knew I wasn't going to do that. And the second thing was he was very active in the ANC very early on. And say whatever you will about what the movement has become, but you can't take away the kind of people it bred and created. And he's one of them. It created a, a caliber of black person who was independent, who was irreverent, who was a dreamer, and who was willing to do whatever it took to make progress. So, you know, for me, it's kind of a no-brainer that that's the same party yeah. that created a him and Nelson Mandela, Walter Sassoula. He's an incredible But there were example. no mentors for him. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. great that yeah. you have him. Yeah. So <laughs> how, how does one start to even think beyond what you see? Because he had to think about stuff that wasn't visible. I have to tell you, I remember he and I had the conversation about this and I said yeah. to him, I'm jealous. I said to him, I said, yeah. I'm jealous because you were in the room with a Oliver Tambo and Nelson Mandela, Walter Sassoula. You were talking to these guys and you were talking to them as peers. Yeah. So where you are correct was he didn't have a, you know, sort of a hierarchical mentorship relationship, but he had peers who in all of their own spaces, Mandela and Tambo in law, Walter Sulu in civil service and in the political sector, he had peers who were pushing boundaries. I think about uh, my very first mentor, Bob Max Meisela, yeah. who created NBC. He was a strong friend of Richard, but a pioneer in financial services. These guys, mm. you have to understand, were what black business is. These guys are what we should all be aspiring to be, not what we've become. And it's a, such a sad state to see how we have misused the instrument of business to represent what it wasn't. These guys were really about how do you uplift, how do you create, how do you add value, how do you better community and society, how do you take people with you on the way. That's what all of these guys were about. And I think today we should all take a moment to pause and remember that that's what they were and maybe that's what we should arc back to. All right, so there was no BEE, there was no funding available. Nothing. <laughs> and again, I keep. Nothing. I almost think that um, to compare him, what he was able to do then, yeah. to someone now, yeah. you'd have to be sort of global. It's incomparable. Uh, yeah. It's incomparable. Uh, you know, Ri Richard Maponya literally, literally was our Jeff Bezos. Mm. He was our Bill Gates, right? Because he did not only what was impossible to be done. Mm but what is still impossible to be done. Yeah. And this is with all the institutions that are available, with all the funding that are available. I don't see many other people repeating what he's done, mm. right? So if you, if you kind of uh, party pursued the scenario and yeah. said, 
everybody, all else equal, take Richard and give him the opportunities that some of the Americans have had, we would easily be talking about our Rockefeller. We would easily be talking about the man who's the wealthiest yeah. man in the world. So, he had that kind of tenacity. So businesses, by their nature, 30, 40 years, they disappear. Yeah. Now, here's a man who was in business his entire lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. What was he able to learn to do to reinvent and to keep going because other people came and failed with regular monotony during his tenure. The way you've asked that question is verbatim the way I asked him that question. <laughs> well, well, don't forget, we're sitting in, we're sitting in, uh, he had like this boardroom lounge. I asked him exactly that question and he thinks and he says to me, you know, my son, business models die. Mm. Businesses don't have to. Wow. And, and, I, and what he was saying, and I got it many years later was, you have to allow for the evolution of your business. You know, so he started in retail, but he ended up in property development and financial services. And he was building an academy today, and I would want to use this platform to implore, particularly our government, to support the academy. They know what he was doing. He was putting a lot of work into the Richard Maponya Institute, which was about giving artisanry skills to young black people so they can employ themselves. He'd been chasing it for a decade, and was just on the precipice of some major successes. So I think it's really important for us mm. to go beyond uh, the language of support and the language yeah. of, of appreciation, but really to put something down and, and create something sustainable. The man was amazing. So the president has called him the doyen of blank business, but I, I would think that he's the doyen of business, business. period. Absolutely. Just. So you're in an MBA class yeah. and you're teaching and you are using him as an example. Yeah. What do you teach from his life? Tenacity. Um, there are many lessons you draw from Date Maponya, and I mm. think, for me, one of the ones that really stood out was his ability to balance. He admits he couldn't really, but he tried. He was a father. Mm. You know, if you meet his kids, who are all worldly. They all speak international languages. They've traveled the world. They've lived all over the world. So he clearly succeeded as a as a provider and as a husband. Um, and at the same time, he lives this incredible legacy. Mm. You learn there that there is, that this duality can be married, that you can achieve a life of meaning and a life of wealth at the same time. But his tenacity to this day stands out. You know, today we work in capital markets. It's an incredibly difficult time to be a black vent venture capitalist asset manager in South Africa. It's a very tough time. Mm. All you have to do is just think back about the days when he wasn't even allowed to sell. And then you realize that it's kind yeah. of not that bad, really. Um, but I think, too, if I may just answer yeah. your question finally this way, to the young black person watching this who has no relation with Richard, who perhaps going, not going beyond the mall, hasn't really touched anything of his, the lesson you learn is that there is no limitation to your creativity. Mm. It's that if you imagine it and you're willing to put the sweat of your bra behind it, it's achievable. All right. You know, I'm going to have to leave it there, but I was just wondering, is this the kind of person who, no matter where he was born in the world, no matter what time he was born into the world, he would have been Richard Maponya? Goes without saying. Richard mm. Maponya needs no adjectives. He needs no introductions. He needs no books written about him. Mm. The man was just the man. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks so much, much indeed uh, for bringing some powerful insights of uh, this remarkable man. Thanks so much indeed. Wisdom. Thank you, Peter.